Hi, Facebook Live. Um, Finley Hospital and Unity Point Health of Youth has asked me to be here today to do a post on Facebook Live, so I'm glad to be here. Um, my name is Daniel Givens. I am a board certified otolaryngologist, also uh, board certified by the American Board of Facial Plastic and Reconstructive Surgery. And they've asked me here today to talk to you about eustachian tube dysfunction. And it's probably something that uh, many of you have thought about or have suffered from but um, never really knew what caused it or what the name is. So uh, we have kind of an exciting, relatively new, minimally invasive treatment to share. So uh, today we are in the Grandview expansion at Unity Point Dubuque Hospital. And it's a great uh, place to work. It's a great place to practice. We have all the, the latest equipment, which has been really nice uh, to perform endoscopy procedures, such as the one we'll show you today. Um, and, uh, one thing that we're going to talk about again is the, the eustachian tube. So with endoscopy, that means we're looking with scopes. Uh, the eustachian tube sits at the back of the nose and we're commonly using the operating room to treat uh, problems like sinusitis or to treat airway problems with the voice box and the larynx and the trachea. Um, so again, uh, glad to be working and practicing here. So what we have um, is called a balloon dilation device for the eustachian tube. Now, what is eustachian tube dysfunction? This is a process that affects about 5% of Americans, so it's very common. And uh, it can affect you more so if you have allergies or sinus problems, or even just a common cold throughout the winter time. Um, so what I'll uh, discuss with you are some of the common symptoms, and those might be ear pressure, ear pain, a clogged or an underwater sensation uh, with the ears. Um, if you have problems with uh, your ears when you have a cold or sinusitis, that can be a, a sign that the eustachian tubes are acting up. Also, uh, crackling or popping, ringing in the ears, or just even the feeling that the uh, hearing is muffled. Now, a lot of the times this comes and goes, but when it comes and stays and, and never leaves like your unwanted house guest, that's when you might come to see me in the clinic uh, to have it, um, have it evaluated. Another really common bothersome uh, part of eustachian tube dysfunction only affects people when they fly. So we have some patients that come to see us that um, just dread getting on that airplane with the pressure changes because they have terrible, terrible ear pain. So what is the eustachian tube? So it is located in the back of our nose. Imagine that we're looking in here through the nose and uh, it's, it's all the way at the back where the nose joins the throat. And it's made out of cartilage and then out of bone and it connects the nose to the ears. And it's what allows us to pop and crack our ears and equalize pressure. Um, it also prevents uh, fluid from building up on the inside of the ears and blocking our hearing and giving us that muffled sound. So this model just shows the outside of the ear, the inside of the nose, and it shows somebody with some nice sticky fluid on the inside of the ears. And um, it's typically by two different muscles inside the body, but every so often there's enough uh, compression from the outside or swelling on the inside that those muscles can't overcome uh, those processes and, and it essentially gets closed off and you feel those symptoms. Um, so what we also find uh, typically when you come to my office, when we're evaluating you for eustachian tube dysfunction, we might find fluid in the ears. That might be our warning sign. Uh, we might see that the eardrum is not moving normally when we put some pressure on it. Um, we might also see signs of chronic ear disease like uh, retracted uh, eardrum or scarring. So when you come to see me in the office, we'll, we'll first take a time just to listen to you. And I find most of the time my patients uh, know what to tell me and that uh, some of the questions I ask aren't even as, as important as what you're already going to tell me. Um, fairly often we're going to be getting hearing testing. So an audiogram uh, helps us to see how you're hearing, if you have any hearing loss from the problem, as well as a tympanogram to measure the pressures of the ear. Um, very commonly we might need to perform what's called nasopharyngoscopy, where I look inside the nose with a scope and pass that back to look at this eustachian tube opening uh, to see if it shows signs of swelling or problems with opening. Um, and then oftentimes we're able to treat just simply with medicines like nasal sprays uh, that are purchased over the counter. But when those things don't work, that's when we consider other treatments. Now forever, uh, an ear tube has kind of been the standard treatment. Um, ear tubes are pretty quick and easy, but there can be some problems associated with them. Uh, and because this is such a common problem in the population, um, we're lucky that a couple of companies have found a new way to treat that problem. Um, and the most exciting new way is the uh, balloon dilation device. So this is a, a small device that's about the size of a, a scope that we commonly place inside the nose. And what we're able to do is use this either in the office or in the operating room. So we can use it with just numbing medicine put on the surface of the opening. We can also 
also do anesthesia, uh, depending on which uh, condition the patient would need to be treated for. Um, we use a scope, and that would be done here in the operating room. I'll just show you on our model here. And while I'm watching with the scope, we would introduce this device inside the nose, and we'd float it to the back of the nose here where this eustachian tube opening sits. And at that point in time, we would advance the tip of the balloon up into that opening. And this model doesn't really play nice with the device, so I don't want to break it here. But what we then do is we inflate the balloon, and we let it sit there for two minutes before we deflate it and remove it. Um, what they've figured out when doing scientific studies is actually that this causes not only just a stretching, but that stretching might just be temporary, but it also is kind of like hitting the reset button for the lining of the inside of the nose and eustachian tube. So if that, um, if that lining has a lot of chronic inflammation, if it has chronic infection, it actually causes it to slough off and kind of start over with new healthy skin. So that's similar to what we see with um, cosmetic procedures like laser skin resurfacing, where the surrounding skin comes in and heals that, uh, heals that sun damaged skin. So um, afterwards, um, there's a relief in symptoms and it's a really minimally invasive procedure. So there's pretty minimal discomfort and downtime. We have a little video we're gonna show you right now of uh, that procedure. So what you're seeing here is that same balloon. You can go ahead and click play. And that balloon is entering in into the opening of the eustachian tube right here. And it really just slides in smooth like butter. Um, really, there's no trauma associated with it. It's very, very smooth. And uh, then they're gonna show that balloon inflating. Um, and it, it's fairly simple, it just sits there. And we just uh, watch and uh, twiddle our thumbs for about two minutes uh, until it's time to deflate that balloon and remove it. Um, I don't know, maybe we'll see if it speeds along here and we can watch the balloon come on out. Well, I think that's okay, we probably get the gist. So um, in terms of results from the procedure, um, like I said, it's uh, really a no downtime thing. Patients are back to work, they're back to their daily lives, they're not needing dangerous narcotic pain pills afterwards. Um, and generally it helps them feel quite a bit better with regards to their ears. So after the first uh, week or so or two weeks when that uh, swelling goes down from the procedure, that's when we start to see improvement in the symptoms like the popping, the crackling, the fluid, the muffled hearing. And um, when they do scientific uh, studies to try to prove uh, why this works and how it works, they found that there was um, over a 40% improvement, or excuse me, a 40% improvement uh, compared to when they just treated it uh, with medicines alone. Um, but then there was also a 47% improvement in quality of life. Um, so when they asked patients questions about how they're feeling, um, they were feeling quite a bit better than patients who just had medicines. So it's really uh, just an example of one of the neat uh, treatments that we have that's new. Um, we're always excited to try out uh, fun new toys like this um, with the goal of uh, helping our patients feel better. So thanks very much for taking the time to uh, be with us today.